A clamp, any physicist will tell you, is a simple machine that works like a wedge. In fact, the screws on this clamp are wedges wound around cylinders. But that simple description does not describe the reality that clamps are in fact deviously essential tools that are honey dipped and deep fried in Murphy's Law. Consider, for example, the phenomenon that no matter how many clamps you bring with you to your workbench or your assembly table, you're always going to be at least too short. Or the fact that at least one of those clamps is going to be the wrong type. Well, I don't want to mess with the natural order of things, but I have here a workaround that just might reduce the impact of Murphy on your assembly tasks. Ow. A few years ago, a woodworking organization in my little corner of Ohio offered a substantial prize for whichever member had the most clamps. I figured that I was a shoe in After all, I had been collecting clamps for 30 some years. So I counted up all my clamps and turned in a photo of an impressive 479 clamps. And I lost didn't even get an honorable mention. The prize, by the way, was more clamps. The point is that woodworkers collect a lot of clamps. And not only that, we collect a lot of different sizes and types of clamps. And as our collection grows, we need a place to keep all these clamps and hopefully store them in such a way that we can find them when we need them. At first, we tend to store them on the walls with all our other tools. But as our collection grows, this soon becomes impractical. After all, who has the wall space for 479 clamps? Furthermore, it takes time to walk across your shop to whatever wall your clamps are hanging on, get the clamp, bring it back to your workbench, and then do it all over again because you didn't get the right clamp. This clamp caddy solves both the storage and the retrieval problems. You can store your clamps in some out of the way corner of your shop and then bring them, most if not all of them, to wherever you need them. It's a dirt simple design, which makes it extremely versatile. The caddy not only stores a lot of clamps, it stores a lot of different types of clamps. Furthermore, I designed this caddy so that you could make it from a single sheet of 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter plywood, a smidge of 1 quarter inch or 6 millimeter plywood, one 2 by 4 and some electrical conduit. I started with a simple rack on which to hang small and medium sized clamps, such as C clamps, small bar clamps, and spring clamps. I attached this rack to a big box. The top and the bottom of the box are grids, and these grids hold long bar clamps and pipe clamps. I also attached a shelf to the box opposite the rack. This is meant to hold hand screw clamps, but it can also hold other medium sized specialty clamps that don't neatly fit in a box or on a rack. The bottom of the box beneath the grid houses two pull out drawers that hold a variety of small clamping tools, such as band clamps and corner squares. Finally, I left enough room between the rack posts to store an assembly table. And the whole kit and caboodle is mounted on four swivel casters, large enough to navigate extension cords, escaped hardware, stray dog toys, and any other annoying obstacles that populate your shop floor. Let's start with building the box, because that's what everything else is either stuck to or stuck in. Cut or route a few rabbits and dados in the sides that will hold the upper ends, the lower ends, the bottom, and the false bottom. Give some thought to the types of long clamps that you'll be storing in the box. This will determine how you make the grids that will become the top and the bottom of the box. There are several different types of long clamps that you may be fond of. Pipe clamps, flat bar clamps, I-beam clamps, U-beam clamps, and wooden bar clamps. My collection includes mostly pipe clamps and flat bar clamps. 
which fit nicely into one and a quarter inch or 32 millimeter diameter holes. For these, I created grids by drilling a matrix of holes. I drilled all the way through the top, then just part way through the false bottom. I do have a few I-beam clamps and U-beam clamps. And for these, I created some slots by drilling out the material between the two rows of holes, then cleaning up the edges with a sharp chisel. I also used a router plane to clean up the bottoms of the slots in the false bottom. You can also use a jigsaw, coping saw, rasp, or a router to clean up the slots. If you have mostly U-beam clamps or something else that would fit better in rectangular holes, you may want to create the grid from strips of wood rather than drilling holes in plywood. Cut a series of dados in the strips to create lap joints. Then glue the strips together to make the grid. I've provided drawings for both types of grids in the plans for this clamp caddy. If you make these rectangular grids, you'll still have to make a plywood false bottom, but just don't poke any holes in it. However you make your grids, don't glue the top grid in place. Just lay it on the ledgers near the top of the box. You want it to be removable so that every 20 to 30 years, you can vacuum out the sawdust that collects inside. The rack starts with two vertical posts, one and a half inches square. That's two by twos to American craftsmen and 38 millimeters to everyone else in the world. Drill a series of seven eighths diameter holes every two inches or 22 millimeter holes every 51 millimeters halfway down the length of the posts and then attach the posts to the box with glue and screws. Cut pieces of one half inch or 13 millimeter electrical conduit a little longer than the distance between the outside edges of the posts. Slide the length of conduit into the holes. These serve as horizontal rails from which to hang clamps. There are several ways to hold these rails in place. I elected to drill holes in the ends and insert hitch pins through the holes. You can also use set screw tube connectors. You can make however many rails you need and position them wherever you want. Furthermore, you can add, subtract, and reposition the rails as your clamp collection grows and evolves. One more thing. With the rack attached, the caddy looks to be top heavy, but we have found through experience it definitely is not. The weight of the clamps in the box more than counterbalances the weights of the clamps on the rack. However, just to be safe, when loading this caddy for the first time, load the box first and then the rack. If you don't yet have enough clamps to put in the box and you're still worried about the rack making the caddy top heavy, let me show you a different way to make a rack. This is an older and somewhat more abused version of our clamp caddy. I've made the rack entirely from plumbing pipe and a few electrical conduit connectors. The pipe fits in the holes in the grid and you can position it anywhere in the box that provides the best balance. On the other side of the box from the rack, I've put a narrow shelf. Actually, this is more of a ledge that I use to hold my collection of hand screw clamps. But you can use it to hold any sort of strange and unnatural clamping device that doesn't fit comfortably in the box or on the rack. Attach the shelf to the side of the box with metal brackets. Then drive several screws through the side and into the shelf from inside the box. You could also drill holes or cut notches in the shelf to hold whatever it is you want to keep there. Or you could use the space for a row of pegs, some trays, another rack, or nothing at all. It all depends on what you have to store. At the bottom of the box, there is room for two small drawers that I can use to hold small clamping equipment, like these corner squares or band clamps. Like the box, these drawers go together with simple dados, grooves, and rabbits. And they aren't really drawers exactly, they're pull-out trays that you can take to the work without having to unpack all the stuff that's in them. As I've built them here, these drawers are five inches deep or a 127 millimeters. If you need deeper drawers, you must raise the position of the false bottom.
there's also enough room between the two posts to store one of our small assembly tables. If you've been with us for a while, you've probably seen this table in more than a few of our videos. As we have demonstrated over and over, it's an immensely useful and versatile clamping aid. To store the assembly table on the clamp caddy, cut a rail that will fit between these two vertical posts and cut a rabbit in that rail that will fit the bottom edge of the assembly table. To hold the upper edge of the box and to make it easy to store and retrieve, install two turn buttons near the top edge of the box. It also occurs to me that you could hinge the assembly table to the posts and have it fold up so that you could do many of your assemblies right here at the clamp caddy. Finally, it's time to turn this caddy into an actual caddy, that is, make it mobile so that we can get the clamps to the work. Put some serious thought into the casters that you will use, both their size and their weight capacity. When I made my first to clamp caddy, I just used some two-inch casters that I borrowed from a retired furniture mover. These were way too small to negotiate the extension cords and the other obstacles that we used to decorate the floor of our shop, and way too flimsy to support the weight of 479 clamps. I recommend that you use, at the very least, 3-inch or 75-millimeter casters. These are big enough to roll over small obstacles and usually have a load capacity of between 200 and 250 pounds, or 90 to 115 kilograms. Four of them will easily support half a ton, whether you spell it T-O-N or T-O-N-N-E. I am not going to kid you. I'm about 10 clamps away from needing a small tractor to drag this thing around the shop for me. But it does move, and those of you with smaller clamp collections will be able to move it easily. With these two rope handles, you can get your clamps to follow you around the shop like a puppy dog. And even if you don't need your clamps to be mobile, this does store an amazing amount and variety of clamps in a very small space. All your clamps at hand, wherever that hand may be.